So if I move on to the technical documentation, obviously the instructions for use are part of your technical documentation. The uh, essential requirements or summary of safety and performance are part of your technical documentation. Um, overall, there are other aspects. Annex 2 of the MDR starts to talk in a lot more detail about what is required in terms of technical documentation. So under the MDD, the conformity annex is described very generally that there should be technical documentation and it gave some headers in Annex 2, Section 3 about, you know, there should be enough information about the design of the device, about the clinical data. But Annex 2 of the MDR starts to say that the technical documentation and if applicable, the summary thereof should be drawn up by the manufacturer. It shall be presented in a clear, organized and readily searchable and unambiguous manner. So if I'm honest, some of the documentation that we receive is a random collection of uh, PDF files and we have to navigate them ourselves. This is starting to say that you need to bookmark it, you need to make it readable, it needs to be organized in a logical manner. And, and the, the regulation gives you a lot more help to do this because it provides a lot more detail about what should be in there. So the content is much more, spe much more specific. So in, in terms of the headings, there, are a very, there, there is a very high level table of contents that describes the description, the information supplied, the design and manufacturing, through to the product verification and validation. And I would say that this is quite similar to what's in the MDD. The difference with the MDR is that it then goes into a lot more detail about what that means. I think that's really helpful for manufacturers and notify bodies to understand what should be there. I spend a lot of time arguing about why I should be able to see the risk management procedure so that I can understand the risk management output. And, and, and this starts to give information to manufacturers about what should be there for the notified body and for anyone else if, if the competent authority wants to look at it. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about every single bit there, but it starts to talk specifically about the mode of action and, and being scientifically demonstrated. I have lots of conversations with manufacturers about, well, it, it clearly works like this. It does. It's always worked like this. But how can you demonstrate that it's working like that? How do you demonstrate that the mode of action is physical and not medicinal? And it, so... It, this is called out in the regulation and, and I think it will be much harder to, uh, to address. It also starts to talk about the novel features of the device being addressed and, and, and calling that out in your technical documentation and I don't think I see that very regularly under the MDD. It then also cross-references cross at the end a discussion of other medicinal therapies used in conjunction with the procedure. So if you're implanting a hip replacement and putting cement around the stem, are you also applying antibiotics as standard or, or is that expected? And how does that affect your treatment option with the hip replacement? And you know, does that really get discussed currently in the clinical evaluation reports? Possibly not as well as it could do, but this is starting to say that it needs to. It also goes into a lot more detail in terms of the information supplied. So we talked a little bit about the implant card and, and the summary of safety uh, and clinical performance. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that again. But this starts to say that the, the notified body needs to be able to see the promotional materials. So we're talking the marketing information that goes out to the, to the manufacturer. So what your marketing team are telling the people that use your device is now regulated. They cannot just go and tell them that you know it fixes everything. It, it has to be in line with what's in your technical documentation. Uh, that's going to be quite hard to manage, I think, for a lot of manufacturers. Um, and then it starts to talk about information to allow the design stages to be understood. I often see technical documentation that has been composed at the end of the process. And so it just said, well, it was designed like this, and this is what we've tested. But how did you get to that design? Were there any iterations? Why did you change the design? What have you done to get there? So understanding that process. And I think many manufacturers that have a design history file currently probably have that information, but it's often not presented in the European setting. It's presented to, in the US, though. Um, this is quite a change under Annex 2 for technical documentation. It starts to say that 
uh, some kind of checklist is required for your general safety and performance requirements. Under the MDD, there is no requirement to have an ER checklist. 99% of manufacturers have an ER checklist. In 10 years, I've had one technical file that didn't have an ER checklist. And, and to be fair, they did adequately demonstrate that all essential requirements were met using another method, but it's quite uncommon. Under the MDR, it says that you will have a checklist and you will define how all of the safety and performance requirements have been met. Um, and it shall contain information to demonstrate conformance. And, and it starts to give a format for how that might look like, that you might list the SPRs, list whether it's applicable, list the standards that you've used, list the testing, and, and identify the location. I don't, it, for most manufacturers, I think they're already doing this. I think it will just be a change to using SPRs and, instead of ERs. Annex 2 also talks in more detail about the benefit risk analysis and, and what that involves. The, it shall contain information on the benefit risk analysis. Sometimes we don't always see that in the technical documentation. We have to ask for it. Um, and it, it shall identify the solutions adopted. It, I think the note at the bottom here is important. This part is just saying that everything in 14971 2012 applies. And it starts to bring a lot of the words from 14971 into the regulation. So if you're a manufacturer and you believe that you already meet the requirements of 14971 2012, then you're probably quite well prepared for the MDR. And then we get into what is product verification and val validation. And, and the, the, the important thing here is that it says that the clinical evaluation, its results and the ev evidence derived shall be docu documented in a clinical evaluation report. So it specifies that there will be a report that will collect all of this data and put it, put it together and justify the, the clinical evidence. You'd be surprised how many times I have seen a collection of peer-reviewed papers just stapled together in the back of a technical file. That, that can't happen anymore. Under the MDR, it says specifically that there should be a report. Um, and, it, and it gives more information about those specific cases, so medicinal substances and the requirements for uh, medicinal consultation, and also those other CMR products and, and devices that need to have a measuring function or a sterile function.